Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm delighted to be hosting our second Sustainability Awards to celebrate the brands, organisations and products genuinely taking action to limit their impact on the planet. Today, I'm pleased to be joining you from the lovely bar here at Accor's Sofitel St. James Hotel, one of this year's winners. At Marie Claire, we've always encouraged conscious consumption. We've long championed the concept of reusing and recycling, buying quality over quantity and encouraging our audiences to use their collective voice to push for more transparency around the way our products are made. But today, as a leading multi-platform digital first destination, we're able to bring these values to wider audiences than ever. I'm proud to have been able to work with leading organisations such as the Soil Association, Sustainable Beauty Coalition, WWF, Sustainable Goals and B Corps to empower and educate our audiences in my time as Editor-in-Chief over the past two years. From our political dispatches during COP26 to our expert-led content on avoiding greenwashing, we are committed to helping our audience of over 7 million each month make the most ethical choices they can and supporting the brands large and small doing the same. Our mission is to lead the conversation and drive long-term change. And I'm delighted to have been recognised for our commitment to sustainability by the British Society of Magazine Editors and to have partnered with both the British Fashion Council and British Beauty Council to tackle the climate crisis head on. I want to take this opportunity to thank our incredible judging panel of over 50 experts, business founders, thought leaders and activists who have given up their time to help us make the judging as rigorous as it should be. And of course, thanks to all of you for taking positive steps within your own organisations to implement ethical practices. Now, before we go into the awards, I'm going to hand over to our fabulous sustainability editor, Ali Head, to talk through our editorial insights. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea, and hi to everyone watching. It's been an honour to judge another sustainability award alongside our immensely knowledgeable panel of industry experts. Sustainability has always been key to Marie Claire, but now more than ever, we need action. Action from the government, action from businesses, and action from individuals to come together and take the small but necessary steps towards building a better tomorrow. Acknowledging that how we live impacts the environment is essential and encouragingly we've seen that our readers increasingly want to educate themselves on living more sustainably with traffic up around 300% year on year. Our top performing pieces are explainers on sustainable living, B Corp brands, greenwashing and environmental documentaries and we've seen great traffic from our coverage of the eBay Love Island collaboration this season. Not forgetting our Ellie Golding Earth Month special of course, which saw Marie Claire partner with WWF to deliver a six article sustainability special. Our articles on reducing your carbon footprint, the benefits of eating sustainable food and cutting down your fast fashion consumption saw an average traffic increase of 850%. So we're really proud of what we're doing to reshape the narrative and encourage everyone that making a sustainable change doesn't need to feel overwhelming, far from it. Often it's about investing in the right brand and supporting the companies genuinely doing their bit. Now, before we reveal the winners, here's a little insight from the judges. Hello, fellow Marie Claire fans. Thank you for doing your bit to sustain our future. In the last few years, people are getting more and more interested in nature. The Woodland Trust has recorded a huge increase in visits across their woodland sites and tree planting has grown exponentially. People are becoming much more thoughtful shoppers and getting interested in gardening and growing veg and food at home. Such thought means that we as consumers gives us the opportunity to think about how we're using the products, about how we can also make a difference. Protecting and restoring nature can contribute something like up to one-fifth towards the fight against climate change. And I thought, well, beauty has always been inspired by nature and has sourced many of its ingredients from nature. So why not start there? Start with the ingredients, start with the packaging. How can they be more natural, sustainable, and really protect and restore our beautiful planet? If we go vegan with the cosmetics we buy, the food we eat, and the clothes we wear, 
we will not contribute to the destruction of forests used for factory farming. We will help close factory farms for reptile skins, fur and angora that pollute the earth. And we'll keep wildlife out of laboratories and in the wild in their homes where they belong. Ask yourself whether you could find an alternative product that uses less plastic. Look out for repeatable third-party certifications such as GOTS and COSMOS. Products that have been certified by these standards have been independently checked to make sure that they stand up to environmental and social concerns and you can purchase them in peace of mind that they reflect your values. Always look for the B Corp logo when I'm shopping or I'm looking to collaborate with other companies because it's a great sign that a business is truly committed to transforming the global economy and also committed to continuously improve, which I think is what it's all about. Let's talk about wine and sustainability. I'd suggest researching producers that really take time and work seriously to reduce their impact on the environment. Like B Corp, lots of the environmentally conscious producers have worked to achieve B Corp status. The other thing you can do is look at retailers, wine merchants and supermarkets who take sustainability seriously. Ask them what their policies are. There are now almost 8 billion people on our planet and over 500,000 plant species that we can use for food. However, we eat less than 100 in terms of our diets. Out of the 100 plant species that we eat, four staple crops represent over 60% of our calorific intake. And those four crops are wheat, corn, soybeans, and rice. This over-dependence on a few staple crops is believed to be responsible for health-related illnesses. Perhaps it's about renting that special dress, not buying, sharing cars, not leasing, taking slow travel on your holiday this summer, or perhaps looking into solar for your home, and simpler things like cutting out meat from your weekday lunches. Whether it is commitment to rental, uh, to wardrobe sharing with your friends, or like me, to really think about what you're ordering online and to make sure that it's one size only, and really don't return if you don't have to. Food waste is a good example of something that most of us can quickly reduce. Waste at food accounts for about 8% of global emissions. That's because when we don't use food, we not only throw out the food, but we've also wasted water, fertilizer, seeds and energy. So this is really a fairly easy win to make.
there are some easy changes we can make that are neither life-altering nor complex. In fact, small shifts in our habits can really go a long way. 2022 has been a landmark year in many ways. It's the year where sales of reloved clothing grew faster than fast fashion, where sales of electric cars overtook combustion engine. In the fashion sector recently, more than a hundred companies have committed to science-based targets uh, as a start. It's time to be more ambitious rather than less. Think differently and to challenge ourselves to try and change for the better. Start somewhere. Do something little. It doesn't have to be overbearing or a huge task. All the little things help and Great, big changes. I focus on personal sustainability because I really believe it's something we can control. And with over 68% of us experiencing climate anxiety, it is really important that we focus on what we can control and what positive change we can actually affect when it comes to saving the planet. I'm trying to grow a lot of food at home as well. And I have to say my 14 month old absolutely loves it. He can pick strawberries and eat them straight away. He can even water the plants now. So it's been good for his development too. 70% of all food waste comes from UK homes. And it is such a, such a simple fix that we can do. It is literally eat the food that you buy. Anything that you bring into the house is your responsibility and you need to eat it. Eliminating food waste is something like number three on Project Breakthrough's list of climate solutions. So in the past year, I've tried to focus on eliminating food waste from my life as much as possible, taking time to give food and products I no longer want away through apps like Olio. I've also petitioned my residential building to begin food waste collection, which we won in the past year. So it's these small actions, particularly when taken by the majority, that can really make a huge difference. Going fully vegetarian or vegan can be a challenge for a lot of people, but just switching to eating less meat is actually super easy. I took part in the carbon literacy training. I came away with two steps to take to lower my carbon footprint. One was to eat less beef, which sits at the top of the meat table. And the second was to go away and to line the backs of the radiators with special radiator foil to reflect the heat back into the room, which not only lowers your carbon footprint, but of course saves you money. I've been striving to eat less meat and I've been looking for products with a local short supply chain, looking to localize, get closer to the product, get closer to the people who rear the sheep, grow the cotton and sew the clothes that we wear to make sure that we know what's happening and that we can promote and support more sustainable practices. To ensure that our food is being sourced more sustainably and responsibly. That starts by being aware of how our food is produced and how it gets to us. Certification schemes like the Rainforest Alliance can help shoppers to identify products which are more sustainably sourced. So be sure to look out for the Little Green Frog on Pack. So I'm trying to make my diet a lot more varied because not only is it better for my human health, but also better for the planet in terms of plant production, which increases biodiversity. I would suggest getting a local seasonal veg box. It's an amazing thing to do. It's really easy and it makes you support local and seasonal produce. One change that I've made this year to have a more positive impact has got to be opting for the slower travel, taking the train instead of flying and ultimately it's a much nicer way to travel and to see the world and it has huge environmental benefits as well. If you live in an area where you have access to a traditional milkman and you'd be surprised how widespread they are, it is to switch to reusable returnable milk bottles. It saves on loads of plastic bottles. This year I started drinking coffee only from bird friendly farms in South America where they don't use pesticides. Start using more eco-friendly cleaning products all around the house. It's just something that is a small step for me because I do a lot of cleaning, because I do a lot of cooking. So I saw the amount of damage that I was doing. The change I made in my personal life is I started running and I just completed my very first half marathon at the Lewa Safari Lab Safari, running across animals in a conservancy. And I run this for mental health. There is no health without mental health. And the reality is that Mental health is just not taken seriously at all in Africa. Less than 1% of budgets of African government is devoted to mental health. I was running and fundraising for medications. 
so that more people can be diagnosed and be on medication for mental health. Look at your pension. Last year, I came across the amazing campaign, Make My Money Matter. By switching your pension or greening your pension, you will have 21 times more impact than giving up meat entirely, never flying, and also switching to a renewable energy provider. So last week, I added my signature to their latest campaign, which is to try and end pension pots going towards deforestation. From a fashion perspective, uh, of course, particularly in my position, it is very challenging because I do want to buy a new product, but I'm very mindful of the product that I buy. And the one commitment that I've made to myself this year is to really think about what I'm buying online and the amount of product and to make sure that I'm only selecting one size and really think about the sizing options that are available online so that we can think about reducing the amount of returns. It used to be a real luxury to think about ordering two or three sizes, finding the one that fits, sending the rest back. But actually that has a significant impact on our planet is thinking about the transport going backwards and forwards and also the product then being able to go into full price sale. I've been trying to have a positive impact by remembering that the most sustainable product is the one that you already own. Use and start with what you have. There are so many incredible products on the market now that it can be really easy to want to replace everything you own with something that is sustainable. A lot of people think that they need to go out and buy a hoard of brand new products and throw out everything that they have and that doesn't do the landfill or the planet any good. But to reduce waste I try really hard to wait until the end of a product's life and then replace it thoughtfully. Use up what you have and then after that start researching and getting excited about potential sustainable swap. We should make sustainability a lifestyle, not just a movement. Being eco-friendly 100% is not easy, but we are working, we are pushing, and well done to this company that we look up to for trying, for pushing, and for promoting this movement. What we need is to think about big companies and governments and how to get them on board to create the kind of change that we really need to shift the needles. We need these big companies to think about their products, the transformational business model, and we need the governments to create the kind of policies that we need out there. So get out there, exercise your voice in whatever way possible. That's how we're going to really get a real movement in time to reach the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. The future can be different, so let's set aside the old and unsustainable habits and replace them with new ones that allow us to reduce our personal environmental footprint and our carbon footprint. The most important thing is to remember that small actions help every day. It's the collective that really brings sustainable change. So let's do this together.